Hey everybody and welcome back to the Jedi Knights Watch. My name is Graham and today we're going to be doing another six scale unboxing and review but this is not going to be Hot Toys. This is going to be the very first figure from Queen Studios in art and it is the Joker from The Dark Knight. Yes, this is the first uh, figure from in art and it's got a lot of controversy. There's a lot of good things, some bad things possibly that we, we see. I was actually going to get the two pack of the rooted hair and I just decided over time I don't really need two of these figures in my collection. So I did cancel that pre-order and wound up just finding this on the second hand market. It is a little bit hard to find right now. Hopefully you were able to pre-order it otherwise um, you just got to kind of look on BST or, or if you can find a deal or something like that. But it's a cool box. It's got this purple sleeve over it. And it says the Dark Knight Joker. When we take that off, there's like the in-art designs with the Joker head in there as well. And this just gives you kind of a, a cool look at the box itself. It's a little bit a little bit smaller than a typical Hot Toys box. And um, it is the standard edition. There was three um, different barcodes. We have this one, the standard. The two-pack that's sculpted and then the two-pack that's rooted. Now, in-art's prices are a little bit high. And, you know, we were... We were told this was going to be a premium figure, so that's kind of what we're going to see today. How premium is this figure? When we get the box onto the table, it's got a nice foilage thing going on the front, but I love the magnetic design of the cover. I love these styles of boxes. It reminds me of like a, a DX with the foam inserts. Right inside, we do get a little note from InArt, so if I can just get that out, it comes in a nice foil envelope, and when we open it up, it is a thank you letter from InArt, so, you know, that's nice. Um, don't know if I really needed that, but it is a nice touch. Would be, I mean, it's, I kind of like that better than, like, the DX19 keychain that Hot Toys gives us. Like, this is, I don't know, it just seems like a more genuine touch, but whatever. When we remove the foam, we get our first look at the InArt Joker and all of the accessories that come with. We'll remove the first... Uh, foam package and then on the bottom we do get that base. That's where a lot of the controversy is going to be I can't wait to to check that out and see how good or bad it is But here's our look at the figure. I gotta say the head sculpt was What got me onto this figure? That's what I really loved also just the detail the detail in the hands the paint applications um, The details in the the accessories Even the um, the outfit, you know, we can't really compare this to hot toys DX 11 because that figure is so low so old, so I just don't think that's that's fair. But taking a look at the round base, I love the fact that it's round. This was another selling point for me. Lifting it up is actually lighter than I thought it would be. And then on the bottom, some uh, designs here. It says the Joker. We've got a nice foam pad so it doesn't scratch your display. Love the cracked bat on, the, on one side and then the Dark Knight on the other. So I love how you can kind of flip it around depending on what mood you're in. Got these cool tiles here with like the, uh, the grout and just kind of the black wash going over the edges. It looks really good, real realistic. And if we grab our Joker figure, just to kind of put him on and see, you know, he does hold pretty well. The magnets are pretty strong, you know, no complaints there. The one thing though is the shoes are curved weird. So it's just, you gotta have them in the right spot. And it's seems to be that center tile. Like, you know, sometimes Joker has a wider stance. And if we try to do that here, it just seems like his legs kind of get sucked back into the center tile. But after, you know, giving it some shake tests here, it does hold pretty good. You know, I try to move the the feet to point out a little bit, and it definitely kind of wants to gravitate back in. You know, if you try to put one foot on, you know, you might be able to make that work as well. He's standing right here. If we move him to the other side, you know, again, obviously it's a, a, a circular base, so you can't really move him too much. So I think that's what InArt was kind of going for was was pretty much going to be on the center anyway. But I do wish the whole floor was magnetic so we could have a wider stance there. Going to the accessories that come with our InArt Joker, we do have quite a bit of hands. And I love this new design. Um, it's pegged in and it's magnetic. I don't know if you can see that, but it pegs into closer to the elbow so we don't have those ugly joints you know, showing. And it looks just more real, but look at the paint application here. I love the black, the white, the red. You know, his knuckles are kind of red from like hitting somebody or whatnot, maybe even just the paint on on his face. But cool, um, cool hands that like point or do different gestures. So they really did think of all of that. And going to the gloved hands, these look pretty nice too. They're a little bit more stiff than Hot Toys, which I don't like, but 
Um, really good design here with the buckle and then also the um, just the stitching in the glove as well. This one here would be for like holding the string to the um, the grenades. So I just like that they gave you a bunch of different hands. The handcuffs here are actually going to be made from a stainless steel. So they got a little bit of weight to them. They feel really good. They don't feel cheap or, you know, plasticky. And obviously that's because they're not. So that's really nice. The one thing that is plastic, though, is going to be this knife, which is weird because all the other accessories are um, like a die cast. So I'm wondering why they went plastic here. It's not uh, it's not a big piece, so it looks nice, but it is plastic. Going to the um, machine gun here, it is a it is very well done. It's a matte black, but you can see it's got like these this print here, like a normal gun would have. And the mag does come out, and you can see the bullet there, and it looks very well done. But it is very heavy. It's got some weight to it. I do worry about how he's going to be able to hold this in the hand. And then his handgun here is also going to be die cast. And um, again, nice print. Very, very good detail. It's spring-loaded here. The mag does come out, and you can kind of see the, um, the bullet there as well. Going on to... Again, this was you, so forgive the presentation here. That's a bunch of cards and money. I should have taken a closer look at the money. It is really well done. It's double printed, so each bill, it's not just the outside bills. But once we get the Joker himself, which is why we're all here, once we get him out onto the turntable, I gotta say, I, I love this figure a lot. He looks really good. I love the head sculpt. I think the tailoring is really well done. And I think he looks great on this base. It does look... I want to say statuetic, if that's even a word, but it does look really good, and it looks like it goes together, whereas sometimes with Hot Toys, the base doesn't fit the figure, and it looks more toyish. This feels like it's incorporated into the figure, and it looks so darn good. I love it so much, and I don't think I'll have too many problems with that base, but let's get him in hand and get a closer look here at how this thing operates, what we like, what maybe we don't like. The portrait is amazing to Heath Ledger, to the Joker. It pops off really easy, which isn't a problem because it's not like it's not like a hand where he's going to be holding anything or, or anything like that. So it's fine if it pops off easy. I, I tend to not like to fight with it, but you can see the white paint going into the hair. You know, got the skin peeking through of the paint here as well. It is the sculpted hair, but I think it looks pretty good. It doesn't look the best. You know, I think maybe the prototype looked better, but I still like it. It still looks good. The back just pops off and then you do have like a purse system here. I love this. I'm so glad they didn't do the single eye rolling. I love it when they move together because I can never seem to get the eyes right when they move independently. But you can see the magnet there and just to pop it back on, super simple, just goes right in. I do like the ease with that and then you can pose them. Just watch the collar because the hair tends to catch on it. So I just kind of pop the collar back out from under the hair. The coat looks great. It's got wear marks. It's got like faded marks. It's got, I don't want to say like battle damage, but you can just tell it looks like a worn coat. It looks realistic. It looks really, really good. Not sure what I'm doing here. I think I'm looking at the pegs here and how they pop off. So you can see there are magnets there. You do have to kind of force the hand back on. It doesn't just sit against it. So push it on and then the magnet will just kind of be that extra security. Looking inside the coat, you can see where the grenades go. Great attention to detail with all the stitching. I love the coats. They do look a lot like the Hot Toys one from the DX11. However, these just look better tailored to the figure. They are tighter to the figure. They just look much, much better. And you can see the gold chain here as well. Don't know if that's die cast or just plastic. I think it's plastic, but um, the pants are great. The shoes are fully sculpted, so those laces are going to be sculpted in. And then you do have socks as well. So again, this thing is packed to the nine. I'm um, just taking a look inside here. I, I'll take the coat off in a little bit just so you can kind of see what the figure looks like with just the vest on. But um, yeah, the attention to detail is really, really good here. Um, posability, you can switch. It poses easy. It's not too loose, but it feels like it could be, but it's not. So it's weird. But you can see just kind of all the articulation we have here. Typical articulation, you know, swivels. Um, we got good crunch here in the abdomen as well. Swivel on the wrist, but it feels loose, but it holds tight. So I, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but there, I forgot to mention there is a, a wire in the coat as well. So you can kind of frame that to the body a little bit better too. It doesn't just wing out or anything like that. And then going down to the legs, there's a swivel in the thigh. He's got some, some good bend here. Really good bend going into the, um, the leg. 
And then the knee feels like it's on a ratchet. It goes a little bit and then it starts ratcheting. So you can go even higher than this if I can get the coat out of the way. Um, so you can go to about there. And then um, there is going to be like rock and swivel in the shoe as well. So really, really well done. Um, doesn't feel too loose in the um, ankle where, you know, I think he'll be toppling over. So that's obviously a really good sign too. All right, so I just wanted to do a little bit of a test here. I'll, here he is holding the gun, you know, because these are die casts, so they are going to be heavier. I'm just kind of pulling on it a little bit just to see, you know, does it just pop right off? It seems to be holding really, really well. Next, let's go to the machine gun, which is bigger and heavier. Um, so again, he can hold it, you know, downward, doesn't just fall off. I'm tugging a little bit. It seems to be okay, but let's bend the arm like if he was shooting at somebody. And obviously here you can see it does not want to hold up and um, that could be a problem for um, people that are trying to pose this thing in more of a dynamic pose. And then here I gave it a little tug and the whole forearm came off. So I'm just going to show you how all that works too. And you can see there's magnets in here. So again, you just push it on and then it becomes secure. And I'm just kind of testing it out to see like how easy it is to come out. But um, And showing you the cool technology here that kind of hides the pegs when you put the... Um, the paint like the painted hands on the gloveless hands if you will but if we turn this this peg i'm wondering if it oh, i'll just drop it but i'm wondering if it'll like stay on so here's the test here kind of just shaking it so it does stay on if you kind of turn the peg so that is an option too but here he is without the the coats on you know he does the body looks really slender which he was but the head looks a little bit big so i don't think i'm going to be posing him this way but here i'll just show you so if we just lift the the sleeve up um, then we'll be able to show you how to get this arm back out. You can just pull it off and it'll pop. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure, which kind of worries me, you know, down the road. Like, hopefully this thing holds, but the magnet should hold too. So here we'll just lift up the sleeve and then we're going to grab our gloveless hand with the point. Then we'll just kind of push it in there. And then look, you can pose him like this as well. So there you go. Joker's pointing at you and, and that's how the... Um, those forearms work with the um, gloveless hand so I think he looks pretty good but again this isn't something that I'm going to pose him without um, the, the coat I just love how he looks with the coat on I think he looks too small here so I'll just put these back on show you how it kind of goes back in just pegs in that's magnetic as well and then we can put the uh, coat and the hands back on once we do that we have him with the DX19 which now seems to be outdated with the new armory coming out but I still love this figure um, so you can just get a size comparison here. The Batman is going to be a, a little bit taller, even without the ears. So, um, And then next to Bane, my other Dark Knight Trilogy figure. You can see those two. Now this is kind of skewed because he is on a Fison body, but he's a little bit taller than Joker as well. Now let's get him to some poses. Talk about some of the things that I like about the figure and some things not so much. First thing that I like is obviously going to be the head sculpt. This thing is the best Heath Ledger Joker head sculpt we've ever gotten i love it so much the detail is there the paint going into the hairline the hair looks really good for being sculpted and i love the purrs second thing that i really like about the figure is the base i know there was controversy about it but i still think it looks really well and i think it works really well too i love how it incorporates in art incorporates the base with the figure and it just looks like they go together and then we can like do extra things and you know there's no crotch grabber so i do love that as well and the third thing that i really like is how the um how in art just use the gloveless hands that they peg in more at the elbow it just hides the ugly joints so we don't have to worry about that i just appreciate in art for going that route and trying something new and while i do worry that the pegs may not be tight enough i do like that innovative design a lot now for some things that i didn't like as much the first thing would be that you know the accessories are die cast like in one aspect is really nice because it's very high end but in another it's kind of annoying because they're too heavy they're not we shouldn't have die cast you know accessories with our six scale figures i just don't think they're strong enough to really be holding them um, the joints are, and the connectors aren't strong enough. The second thing that I didn't like is just that the fact that the base only has the center square. That is magnetic. I wish the whole floor was magnetic so we could kind of have a wider stance and move them around a little bit more. And the third thing that I didn't like about the figure... Hmm. Can't think of anything. Um, I think this thing is a really good first figure for in art. Are there some things that they can improve on? Well, sure. But again, it's their first shot. Uh, I think most of their problems are actually on the PR side, but 
We'll talk about that in a different video. I love the figure. I think it's really well done. Is it worth the price point? You know, that could be another thing that maybe I don't like as much as the price point. We haven't seen Hot Toys give us a Joker in a while, so it's hard to compare this to what Hot Toys would do. So the price point of like uh, where this one's at could be a little bit high. But overall, I'm still super happy about it. I think any Batman fan or Joker fan should have this in the collection. Now, something that I'm going to do here too is just show you the pose that I have him in and how he's going to go into the collection. So here's the pose that I'm going to use, and it's going to be him kind of doing that trademark, showing you the card, whatnot, and then the, the slender stance with the legs together but pointed out, and then using the base but piling the money and the cards on, just making it look like a mess, like chaos is going on. I think this works really well and you can just see again how the base is incorporated to the figure and it looks it does look super high end it looks premium i gotta give them that it the head sculpt is amazing the the outfit is tailored very very well so i am very very pleased let me know what you guys think in the comments below are you getting this are you waiting for hot toys do you have it what do you think i'd love to hear from you in the comments below and until next time stay safe out there and we'll see you soon